All right, one thing that I don't know if people remember about you, and I'd forgotten about this. I'll be, I'll be honest about it. Somebody brought it to my attention. You are not only a great National Hockey League player, but you've been a movie star. Ah, I was wondering where you were going with you this. You <laughs> have been a movie star, um, and it was, uh, what this, was it? This, this is 40. This is 40. Yep. Thank you. I was getting my movies crossed up in my head. This is 40. You were a movie star with some of your Flyers teammates at the time. Uh, got a chance to shoot a bar scene there. What, what was it like to, to get into the, uh, the Hollywood mindset? Well, it was, it was pretty good. Megan Fox is, is not a bad looking gal to look at. And uh, Leslie Mann as well, the, the blonde lady in the, in the film was, was uh, incredibly, incredibly sweet. She'll be and really nice. happy about yeah. that. You said a nice looking gal and the blonde lady. Yeah, well, <laughs> she, she is a sweetheart. She's beautiful as well. But um, it was just a really cool atmosphere. It was one of the longest days of my life. We were there at 7 in the morning till 11 o'clock at night, you know, basically uh, there all day with no breaks and, you know, kind of working us like uh, slave workers, I guess. But it was it was just really a uh, cool atmosphere to be a part of it. And, and I never saw the movie until the um, the premiere out in L.A. I was during the lockout, so we got to go in December. and. Uh, when our scene came up an hour into the movie, I just started to sweat in my in my suit, and uh, I was just so nervous. And then you see your big mug up on the big screen, and uh, it was it was pretty cool. At the end of the day, I haven't watched the movie again since, so uh, it was a pretty cool uh, cool uh, cool time anyway. It was a shame you guys really had to go out of character to play those roles. Yeah, you know, we're never in a bar and never trying to pick up girls, so it was it was it was different. I had to do some acting, so yeah, I'm sure you studied for <laughs> weeks at a time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I want to talk to you about the Hartnell Down Foundation. Uh, a lot of people know about it, how you, you, know, you give back uh, through your means to do that. Um, first of all, I know you've explained this before, but can you just talk to me about the, the Hartnell Down, where it came from, and where you've taken it to? Yeah, uh, a guy on Twitter uh, a few years ago was uh, um, just calling it hashtag Hartnell Down, and uh, he was counting how many times I fell down during a game. and. You know, I saw this this bristleboard sign in, in a road game. It said Hartnell down 150, and then you know, three or four games later, it was Hartnell down 172, and and I was like, what is this counting thing going up? Like, wouldn't it be going down? Hartnell down, it would go down, and so I sent my trainer over there and asked this guy what the heck he was doing, and he was counting how many times I fell down, and and I was like, and I called my uh, my agent and uh, started talking to him about it, and he started dying laughing. He goes, that's one of the funniest things I've ever seen, and I was like, I was laughing, but I didn't really want to laugh, and. So anyways, we just made this website, we, we sold some t-shirts and um, lo and behold, all those t-shirts went out, uh, you know, right away, you know, ordered some more and they, they got sold out. So we kind of uh, were like, well, let's maybe start a foundation and, and do this. And uh, we've wrote a children's book since then. We have uh, were able to give back to uh, some kids in Philadelphia. We actually have some kids from Columbus area um, coming up to these Minnesota hockey camps that I go to every summer. and. Uh, just to come and experience, uh, you know, camp with pros, uh, with kids their own age, and uh, just you know, loving sports and loving loving hockey, and uh, just growing that way. So it's a, a pretty neat little deal that we got going, and um, you know, I never would have thought I had my own foundation or or do something like this, but it's uh, it's been a great ride. Tell me a little bit about that hockey camp and the chance that kids have. There's some of these kids that you take to these camps that they might not get an opportunity in their life to ever experience something like this and, and you're helping to grant them that opportunity. First of all, what does that mean to you and what does it mean to the kids when you watch them get to participate and interact? It's, it's pretty cool. It's, um, you know, my first, first time doing it was a couple years ago in Philly. The, these, uh, these kids came and, you know, just seeing the, their, their smiles on their faces, they're running around this camp, they're jumping in the lake, they're getting to their workouts, they're making the bus on time to go skate, and uh, it, was, it was pretty neat to see that, that live and be like, wow, this is actually what my, my foundation's doing, it was pretty cool. And you know, and later on that day, I saw him laying on the, gra uh, on the grass, He's, uh, and it was just got dark, and I was like, what are you guys doing laying down there? And they're looking up at the stars, and they're like, wow, I've never seen the stars before. You know, just being in, in inner city, you know, Philly kid, never, probably took the time to, to look up, right? And so they're just laying down, just watch the, you know, millions of stars up there. And he's like, well, I've never seen this before. So like, even that kind of, you know, touched my heart a little bit too. So uh, not only just, uh, you know, to, to work on hockey and that kind of stuff, but to, just to grow as a, as a human being as well. So uh, just excited about that and, and to meet some new kids and, and you know, uh, the smile on their face says it all. You know, you, you, you know, you're jumping, you're doing plyometrics, you're working out, all that kind of stuff. And they're just, you know, jaws dropped and you know smiling at you when you give them a thumbs up or whatever it's pretty neat 
But one thing that story tells me about you is you're not just there on the ice. You're not just there in the weight room doing that kind of work. You're you're actually getting a chance to intermingle with these kids. Yeah, yeah. You watch them work out and you know give them a little. Uh, uh, tap on the butts, they get working harder, or, you know, things like that, and, and you know, it's, it gives them a story to, you know, tell for the rest of their lives that they were at a, you know, training camp with Scott and Wayne Simmons and T.J. Oshie and and all these guys. So it's uh, it's a pretty neat deal, and um, you know, I just like I said, I was you know kind of shocked how it all happened, and just uh, just amazed kind of where where the foundation uh, has come, you know, in a few years. All right, as you look at the situation in the next couple of weeks I'm sure are going to go by pretty quickly for you and that training camp will open. What excites you the most about being a Columbus Blue Jacket uh, before you even step on the ice in that uniform? What are you most excited about right now? I'm just I'm excited about the new team, uh, you know, a new atmosphere, a new start, a uh, new group of guys to meet and you know I said earlier too it's uh, you know, to be a, a, a good teammate and be a great team, you got to get to know everybody. And, uh, you know, I'm going to come a little bit earlier than I have in Philly to, to training camp to meet the guys, skate with the guys, have a few dinners, and, uh, you know, and have a chance for them to, to get to know me. And, and, you know, that stuff goes a long way. And, you know, a team that's, uh, that's together off the ice is going to be a great team on the ice, and I, I truly believe that. I remember being in Philadelphia last year and talking with Jake Voracek, and our conversation centered upon <coughs> the pressure that there is from the outside to win in Philadelphia. And he told me, if you lose two in a row, it's terrible. The media is all over you. The people are all over you. They expect you to win every night you go out there. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, is it? Is it, is it good to have that pressure? Is that the kind of attitude? Not that you want to bring that kind of pressure into the dressing room, but uh, the situation to know what the expectations are uh, how much do you want the expectations and that bar to be set so high in this dressing room as well? Yeah, I think you gotta you gotta put pressure on yourselves too, right? And uh, not uh, you know too much pressure where you're gripping the stick tight and you're you know not playing well, you're not skating. But you know in Philly, it, it is a, obviously a lot different than than here than it was in Nashville. And um, you know some people love it, some people don't. And uh, you know talking to Jakey, he's a guy that you know I don't think has any bad days and just goes there and goes with the flow and 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 plays his heart out. So. Uh, you know, fans and media respect that, and um, you know, I think uh, there, there's expectations. I think on, on every team, I think, and, and you know, it's going to be no different here in Columbus. Uh, uh, JD and Yarmo have done a great job the last couple of years, getting a, a great group of guys in here, and um, the guys I've met so far are super nice. Uh, you know, easy to talk to, and, and you know, the the way they're looking in the gym, they're they're uh, working their tail off to get ready for camp. And, of course, you saw a lot of those guys up close and personal last year yeah. <laughs> in a couple of games, so you know what they do outside of that gym, Exa too. Exactly, exactly. All right, last thing for you. Was there any type of drawback that you saw coming here knowing that your former teammate and friend Jody Shelley would be breaking down every one of your plays all through the season? I He was a big part, actually. I'll, I'll give... I don't want to talk bad about Jody, but uh, because he, he can talk bad about you exactly. Later. <laughs> I, uh, I've I've said this, you know, probably after a couple months of playing with him. He's uh, I think everyone might have a, a top five uh, teammates that you've ever played with, and and Jody's been number one for me. He's been nothing but honest. He's uh, you know when you need a, a whip to to get you in, in line, he's he was there to give it to me. And and uh, you know this whole you know trade thing, you know the few days I was thinking of it, he was a guy I talked to almost every day a few times a day just uh, talking about the city talking about the guys because he knows the guys here uh, talking about the management everything and and he was just uh, you know very very honest with me which uh, which I wanted him to be and uh, he's never kind of led me the wrong way so I uh, I love Jody he's a great guy he's uh, got a great family and I'm just uh, excited to, to be around him and and the new guys and everything and uh, you know get this thing going well Scott thank you very much it's great to have a chance to sit down and talk with you I'm sure we're gonna do this <laughs> more than you would like to yeah, throughout the course sure. of the seasons. But uh, <laughs> it's great to have you in town. Wish you nothing but the best of luck. Have fun with the camp in Minnesota. Thank we'll you. see you yep. back here soon. Absolutely. All right, that is Scott Hartnell, and I'm Bob McElligot. Thanks for watching Jackets TV, presented by Ohio Health.